Today we have a folding phone from a company called Blackview. They originally reached out trying to get me to review one of their um, smart like deadbolt lock things and I was like, nah. But on their website they had a cell phone so apparently they're in uh, multiple types of uh, tech markets. I was like, hey, that's like half the price of some of the like LG and Samsung flip phones. Let's go ahead and check it out. And check it out I did. I used it as like my primary phone for just about a month or so. And honestly, it's a fairly decent phone with some downsides, which I will get into after we talk about the specifications. For the SOC, it's using the Helio G99. It is a AMOLED display coming in at 6.9 inches with a resolution of 2560 by 1080. It has a 94% screen to body ratio. So it does take up a good portion of the front display here. This one has an internal 256 gigabyte hard drive or ROM, and it does have 12 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. Now there is something here, right here it says RAM, 36 gigabytes, 12 plus 24. It's kind of false advertising for somebody who doesn't know that's basically just swap memory. It has two rear cameras on the back. The main one is a 108 megapixel Samsung camera, and then you have a 128 degree ultra wide 8 megapixel camera. And then the little camera here on the front is 32 megapixels, and we will be testing that and doing a couple little side by sides. The total battery capacity here is 4,000 milliamp hours, but it is split between a 2700 and a 1300 milliamp hour on each side, and it supports 45 watt fast charging. The operating system on this thing is called Doak. OS. It's basically just a skinned version of Android 13 with some of their own custom apps, which I have not used or touched. Some of their custom apps includes a child mode. We have easy share, live wallpapers, user feedback manual that ships with WPS office, which is kind of cool workspace and some other things that aren't worth getting into. That's one thing I like about flip phones is being able to do that, <laughs> which if you do flip it close, you notice that there's a little screen right here. This is probably one of the could be coolest features of this, but to me, they kind of missed the mark. There is a suite of options here for the back screen, including uh, widgets, display information, uh, audio playback, brightness, and you do have a really nice customization thing here for the clock style and a variety of uh, clock styles to choose from. For the back screen widgets, we only have a couple options here. We have music, number of steps, weather, and camera, and that is it. The button on the side here is a fingerprint reader, which we need set up to access that. So there we go. Now if I close it and then use my fingerprint, we can then access some of the features here. So we have the time date. This is just the default clock. We have our music playback. We have some notifications, uh, weather, and then camera. So you tap to turn on the camera and then you see we kind of have a camera there. So then, geez. The volume button to take a picture of yourself with the back camera. So that is cool, but I do believe they could have done a lot more with that to make it more functional. And you only have options to take a picture. You can't use it to like record a video, at least as far as I've been able to figure out. So that is important to know. I wish they would add some functionality to this thing. Now, when I actually got the device, I was impressed with some of the things it came with. First of all, you could kind of tell there, it does have a screen protector pre-installed, which is nice. And it did come with a super cheap kind of two-part case here. So you can see here what the back looks like and we just kind of snap it on. It does come in two colors. It comes in this black as well as a like light kind of violet purple. So there we go. Now we have a case on it. In the box, it also came with a uh, charger. This is European, so I can't really use it. And a USB type C, manuals, all that fun stuff. Now, when it comes to the actual screen here, when you're looking at it face on, you do notice the actual fold a little bit. That's one thing you're just gonna have to uh, get over if you do want a folding screen is the little bump or the little divot where that uh, fold takes place. The first day of using it was kind of distracting, but I got over it pretty quickly and you do feel it uh, slightly more dramatically. My only experience with like the uh, LG and Samsung flip phones is like in Best Buy kind of tinkering with the little display models. This is slightly more noticeable of a bump, but I would say not significantly, not barely even enough worth mention. It does kind of make a click sound when it opens and closes. I haven't used this long enough to test the like long-term durability of it, but thus far it's held up 
fairly well for me. But I do really appreciate folding phones. Like, where's my... This is the uh, Galaxy S23 Ultra, and having this in your pocket versus this, I'd rather have this in my pocket just for the actual feeling in my pocket. I'd rather have this in my pocket for every other reason. Real quick, I'm gonna run a uh, Geekbench test just to see what we're working with. This, of course, is ARM. It has eight cores. So let's run the benchmark. This is kind of an unfair comparison, but you could get this uh, Galaxy Ultra for about $800 right now. This one's about 500 and we have a uh, iPhone 12 here. So let's get the results for all of these. All of these Geekbench tests are gonna be ran on battery. So the Hero is still running Geekbench. It's been about five minutes. I have the results for both the iPhone and the Samsung, which surprisingly, they both have tied up at uh, 2084 for the single core score. And the Galaxy has a slight lead in multi-core score with the iPhone getting 4845 and the Galaxy getting 5489. So now we just wait for the hero. So this is finally done. We got the Geekbench results. It is not looking that great. We have 721 for the single core score and 1852 for the multi-core score. So when it comes specifically to Geekbench scores, these phones are about twice as good, if not a little bit more. And because of that, I'm kind of worried about the longevity of this thing. I mean, looking here on AliExpress, you can get it for as low as 345, which isn't too bad, but that's roughly the same price of this like iPhone 12 here. Granted, it's not a folding phone. The scores are far superior. In the month of using it, I didn't really notice too much when it comes to performance being an issue. I loaded up some light games and all that, and it didn't really seem to have a problem with that. No problem with YouTube videos, typical things you'd expect on a phone, but again, longevity with those scores is a moderate concern. Especially here, if we go over to back market, you can see you could get a like Galaxy Z Fold 3 for about a hundred bucks more, or you could even go up a level to the Z5 for 700 or the Fold 4 for just above 500. So you can get folding phones for fair prices if you do go used. Now let's go ahead real quick and test the camera quality because this is like one of the main people, one of the main use cases for having a computer in your pocket. So I went ahead and took some pictures with the cameras right here. This is the Galaxy. This is the iPhone. Between these two, the Galaxy obviously just demolishes the uh, iPhone 12. It's just kind of washed out, foggy. Doesn't look that good to me. The uh, Hero 10 actually did pretty good. It's a fair middle ground between these. One thing that's really annoying with some of these uh, phones that you get from China is they have the uh, watermark set on by default, which is annoying. I always forget to turn that off, so I don't really have to uh, label this one at least. But between these, the Samsung definitely is the winner. That's no question. At the price range, this one's pretty good, and the iPhone 12 is disappointing. And then next up, we kind of have a close-up here. This one right here is the iPhone 12, and honestly, out of these, I think it's the winner. It's the most color accurate. We see some pretty good detail on the leaf. Overall, a solid picture. This one is a little less saturated. In the real world, this leaf is about that vibrant, but it didn't do as good of a job as the iPhone as like picking up some of the details in the background. The Samsung one honestly kind of disappointed me. We're not seeing as much texture in the leaf there and the color isn't nearly as accurate as the iPhone. Granted, it's not as rough as this one is. I feel like the color of these are comparable, but the Samsung is just kind of trying to oversaturate things to make it look a little bit better. But overall, this is the phone we're looking at. It's actually uh, moderately impressive. Next up, we have these three pictures and the primary purpose of this was for some of the colors and depth of field. Overall, the Samsung one looks absolutely the best when it comes to color and details, actually. There's barely any depth of field there. So very minimal background blur for this picture. And you can see the iPhone there. Color doesn't look that great but major depth of field if that's something you're actually going for. Do note, again, this is an iPhone 12. It's a pretty old phone, at least in today's standards, but it's a used phone you could get for a little cheaper than this guy right here, which again is another kind of middle ground between the two. I do have to say a little bit better than the iPhone personally, but honestly, out of everything on this phone that I expected them to kind of uh, cheap out on, I thought it would be the camera, and it's not too bad other than this annoying watermark here. And of course, I took a couple selfies here. For some reason, the Hero is mirrored, but between the two popular phones, it's pretty spot on. The uh, iPhone seems a little sharper and a little bit more color accurate than the Samsung when it comes to the uh, front-facing camera. And then this one right here 
is not nearly as good as the two, but not horrible. Does pretty good about picking up some of the detail in the background versus like the Samsung, for example. The iPhone does pretty good. iPhones are known for their front facing cameras, but honestly, out of all of these, it was a super overcast day. The Hero uh, honestly kind of wins when it comes to just the overall color accuracy. And then when it comes to video, Samsung clearly has the better video. Both of the other phones look kind of choppy. Definitely not smooth in the color and just the vibrantness, crispness of the shot on the Galaxy looks awesome. The Hero, absolutely not impressed with the video quality. Static shots are definitely way better. And when it comes to the color and crispness, the iPhone really isn't that bad. Just not nearly up there with the Samsung. So ultimately, would I recommend buying this? If you're gonna get it here on AliExpress for 345 and you want a brand new folding phone and you just wanna spend a little bit to go ahead and test it out, use it for a little bit and see if it's something you're into, it's it's not that bad of a deal. But again, I do worry a little bit about kind of the uh, creakiness and noise that it's making during the folding process. Granted, I don't have the uh, budget to get a bunch of different folding phones to compare it to, so do note that. And being the fact it's a Doke OS, um, I'm not sure on their history of providing like long-term security updates and things like that. So if you're interested in learning more about this, you can do so down below. And with all that, anything I mentioned, including like the AliExpress link and whatnot, will be linked down below if you're interested in checking it out for yourself. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.